Um, we're going to get started with uh, Lee Tucker, and I'll read a little bit about Lee. He's an attorney here with a law firm, Mahaffey, Pickens, and Tucker. He maintains a broad legal practice and serves as general counsel for many clients throughout the state. Received his undergrad degree from the University of Georgia and a graduate degree from Georgia State's Law School. Lee and his wife and three children live here in Peachtree Corners. So I'm going to invite him up for his presentation. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Appreciate uh, this great turnout. I know many of you, uh, and the UPCCA is one of the reasons that uh, I live in Peachtree Corners. Uh, many of you I've got a long history with, worked on a lot of projects over the years, and, and the community involvement and the civic pride uh, associated with our city and what we do here is just great. Makes it unique. Uh, and, and so, again, I'm, I'm proud to be here. Uh, I'll say at the outset that I'm going to try to be juggling a little technology. So I've got a PowerPoint, I've got a laser pointer, and I've got a microphone. So if at any time in the, any of this something doesn't work, uh, raise your hand. I'll be glad to go back uh, and, and try, to, try to reframe uh, the, the question. A couple of uh, things to, to note at the outset. So I'm here representing and, and presenting on uh, a land use project. Uh, tonight, we hope that... Uh, you all will, will agree with us that, that this is a unique opportunity for the city and I think something that can really be a catalyst uh, for some of the things and some of the initiatives that our elected officials and our citizenry have been promoting over the past number of years, certainly, uh, certainly since we've been a city, but, but even prior to that with respect to things that we find important like open space and community amenities. Uh, so this is kind of the first step in the process. To give you a couple dates to be aware of, right now we're scheduled to go to the city's planning commission meeting on February 9th, and I believe the mayor and council date is March 15th, if, if I recall correctly. So there'll be two public hearings uh, relating to this, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody will be able to get all the information that they need. Uh, with respect to a broad overview of the project, and let me, let me just fast forward here, uh, and I'll tell you about these uh, sites in, in, in specific, but there are six individual owners of parcels, 10 parcels, approximately um, 40 acres uh, spread over a fairly wide swath of the city. Uh, the plan, and I'll go into the details of that, represents about 16,000 square feet of commercial space and about uh, 300 uh, housing units. So to start and to orient you, uh, let's see, there, can you see my laser pointer on this, on the left-hand side? All right, so I'll refer to that as track one. This is Engineering Drive where it tees in to Peachtree Parkway right here. This is West Tech Boulevard, or West Tech Drive rather, and then this is Technology Parkway uh, North, I think, and so if you come on up this way, City Hall is sitting right here just off the page. Uh, this is Technology Parkway South coming out towards Peachtree Industrial, and this intersection here is Reps Miller Road and Peachtree Industrial Boulevard. So. Um, Norcross High School is right here. Spalding comes just off the page just to, just to kind of orient you. And then Dix and stuff like that is, is down here just south at Holcomb Bridge and 141. So uh, the parcels in question, I, this is what I would refer to as parcel one. This is almost nine acres uh, on the southwest corner of Engineering Drive and uh, uh, Peachtree Parkway. This track here is approximately eight and a half acres, uh, which, would, which is between Technology Parkway and 141. This uh, area here, which we have taken to referring to in the office as the shark, is um, largely a lake internal to Technology, Technology Park, and that'll be important. Uh, so when I refer to the shark, it's both a, a literal and a figurative characterization. Uh, this area here uh, uh, accesses off Reps Miller. It's actually off of Guthridge Court, which for those of you who are familiar, there are a couple of office buildings out here that would be redeveloped and repurposed. Uh, if we're able to, to ultimately achieve success with this. Uh, this piece here is not part of the zoning application, but I highlight it uh, because it will be important as we get into the project for access off a of research court, which you can kind of see the cul-de-sac here, uh, and there'll be a good access point that we're going to talk about relative to this, which you may have seen something about in the city's presentation, or certainly you've seen uh, information about the easement in, in uh, other presentations. So with that, brief overview. Uh, just a little bit about land use. Here are the areas in question. The area, this area here is the city's uh, LCI area study. 
And these area, this shows you, and this was just cut and pasted out of the city's uh, documents, why it looks familiar. I wish I was that good with graphics. But in any event, the properties in question you can see are here, and they're highlighted in red. Uh, an important thing about this slide, and I think, again, will hopefully inform some of the discussion, is that in this area, and the colors are not very vibrant, but there are uh, approximately 15 tracks that are identified as, on this as being vacant and undeveloped. The property that we're dealing with represents five of those. And so we've got an opportunity to affect a third of the vacant undeveloped land in the city or in the study area uh, with respect to this project. Um, the next slide uh, reflects zoning. And I think the important thing to look at here is these are existing zoning. And you'll see the, this purple color is uh, 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 an M1 light industrial classification though most of that, as we know, is developed out with office and, and other things of that nature. So not, not really heavy industrial, but again, the, the areas in question are highlighted here uh, to orient you as to where we're going. So this is City of Norcross, this is City of Norcross, and then there's the high school right there to orient you on Spalding. So one of the LCI strategies, as, as we understand it, is to amenitize and connect. Some of you may be familiar with this site. This is on Tech Parkway. Uh, as you approach uh, from the south, kind of heading towards City Hall, and the there's a stop up here at uh, Technology Parkway, which goes out to PIB. And this area here is the existing gas easement. And so many of us have probably noticed out on 141 to orient you, uh, there was some construction and other things, maintenance in that easement. I'm not sure exactly what they were doing, but as you go north on 141, uh, the Digital Insight Building is, is there on the right, right as Engineering Drive tees in to 141. The easement is the cleared area that kind of goes up, goes up the hill there. And so this is after you've come across the hill and come across internal to Tech Park across the center. So that's showing what the city was, was identifying as an opportunity in the LCI study. Okay. Here, here is our concept plan. So again, and, and right there, just be as I mentioned, that is this intersection right here that's looking across the easement. And I'll get into this picture a little better, but some, this may look familiar from the LSI study. But anyway, so here's, here's the plan. Parcel 1 I mentioned here, approximately 9 acres. Parcel 2 here, which I'll talk about development. Parcel 3 here, and then parcel 4. The proposed uses, and I'll, I'll go through these in, in a little more detail. We would propose open space, uh, which would hopefully comply with the city's uh, open space ordinance here. Proposed development for about four acres of this track fronting on 141. Extending engineering drive across 141 with a signalized intersection here and connecting to uh, Technology Center Parkway. Then have an open space with the shark which would include activation of or opening of the water feature here, which is about a six and a half acre lake, and then repurposing those older office buildings here for uh, 295 units of millennial housing. And again, I'll talk about all of that in, in the context of, of what we're trying to do. So remember, I mentioned about the open space. This is, again, a slide pulled from the city's LCI study. And what I think is interesting, and, and, and I think what's so exciting about this project for me to work on is that the city and the people who have been visioning for the city have been thinking about the types of things that we're talking about tonight, or going to talk about tonight. So you notice a crosswalk across the parkway. You see that's a water feature back there. That is the lake, actually, in the body of the shark. And you see a trail going up the, up the uh, easement, right? So a lot of us might think, that's great. That's a really pretty picture. How, do you, how can you make something? What is a way to make something like that happen? And I would submit to you the project before you tonight is, is just that. This is a, a picture that shows, again, focuses on the open space, shows congestion. You know, that's East Jones Bridge. Uh, this is Peachtree Corner Circle, Spalding, uh, down to uh, um, Jaybird Alley right here. So the property is uniquely situated to kind of focus a grid system here if you extend engineering drive across. It would be a, a relief point, we think, for some of these other congested areas and again adds an opportunity to connect a lot of different things in, in the city. So this, this map shows uh, that the blue or the light blue are existing sidewalk infrastructure right now today. 
The red are connection opportunities. And so if you see, here's an opportunity to connect, here's an opportunity to connect, uh, the gas easement runs through here, and then we would suggest an opportunity to connect here. So if you start thinking about a, a, a way to get around the city in something other than a car, and you start to add infill pieces to it, uh, you really have an opportunity to start having a loop and then a broader loop that can get you around town uh, and have you out and about walking. So we think it's a, it's a good opportunity in that regard. So you might be sitting there thinking, well, he's been rambling on for probably 10 minutes and we haven't heard anything about what could really happen with, with his project. And so let me, let me show you. We see an opportunity to extend it. So this would be open space if we're successful. So nine acres of open space. There are two creeks that converge here uh, and flow out. Uh, we'd have a crosswalk here to be able to connect the west side of 141 and these sidewalks over here. The blue sidewalks in this picture are exist, or the blue dots are existing sidewalks here. So you connect, come across, you activate this amenity, and again, this is a lake, so you could, and this is about an acre of land between Tech Parkway and the lake. So you could have a landing area for kayaks, you could have uh, an opportunity for walking here. And again, remember, this isn't something we just dreamed up. It's something that had already been thought about, and this project affords the opportunity to actually make it happen with private investment uh, and, and the city's vision as the catalyst. This orange line is very important in our perspective because that dashed line shows a potential trail through the easement. And you can see it's a long run. So this, I guess, is Jaybird here, if I recall correctly coming across the property all the way across the Medlock Bridge uh, right there. That's Burger King right there. Uh, so you can see you start putting a, a track like that together with private property owners and you can really make some, make some efficient uh, utilization of the land. So here's, here's the specifics on the site plan. Uh, this, is the, this is again track one. This is track two. And what we're proposing here uh, is a convenience store, and what we're proposing here is a commercial retail wine store. Uh, it would, it, the site would be developed, uh, but the development after Earth was moved would be limited to about the front 500 feet of the site. So what you have is a, is a sloping topography down towards 141. You'd have level, largely level sites fronting on 141 and then a road coming up with a multi-use trail coming up beside it to activate this area here. And again, this right here on this side, and I'll slide to another slide in just a moment, is the, the, the head of the shark. So you can see if you start putting together the sidewalk infrastructure over here with a potential trailhead, it's nine acres, two streams converging here, uh, you have a pretty good centrally located rally point to both the west side of the city and the east side of the city getting into a network. So, again, two uses here, roughly 16,000 square feet between them. Roughly 6,000 on the, on the um, gas and convenience, roughly 10,000 on the retail uh, use there, the, the wine store. This shows, uh, by way of orientation, again, here's the, where we were on the last plan. This shows the lake, and you can see the shark is not the entire lake. The lake kind of coalesces around here. And then we come around the corner to the uh, Millennial Housing site. The Millennial Housing site we're showing here, but again, this wasn't done in a vacuum. We think it was maybe divine intervention, or maybe, maybe I just got lucky with my presentation. But here's the city. Here's a slide out of the city's plan. Here you see the lake. You see an office building. And you see this area here. Here's another slide out of the city's plan, which shows Millennial Housing activating the infrastructure, activating the water feature, uh, and actually being able to use an amenity and an asset in the city that's pro currently not accessible. Town center, we all are hopefully familiar with the great things going on there, but one of the city's goals is to create remarkable spaces. We think that our project does that. Here's the LCI initiative that says, opportunity for focus on young professional housing. And there's the dot, there's the shark, there's the project, there's the property where we hope uh, we will be able to, to develop. 295 units, the unit mix of this millennial housing is roughly 70 
percent one bedroom, 30 percent two bedroom. No three bedroom units in this. So it's really a targeted, focused attempt at attracting the workers that we hope will come and continue to work in our great uh, employers here in, in town and certainly in, in Tech Park. Interesting about this, so here's the lake. You'll see that, that the buildings are oriented to the lake. And then up, this is Reps Miller and Peachtree Industrial. And so we've got the buildings up here front loaded and pushed up on the street. So it, it hopefully insulates parking between the amenities that we want to feature. We want to feature, I would think, the streetscape relative to what you see when you're driving up PIB. And then we want to feature, for kind of the amenity side, the lake. And so that's what we're trying to do is to insulate the parking in between uh, residential buildings and, and, again, get maximum or appropriate utility out of the site. To give you an idea about the building elevations, and I'll, I'll show you these for all, all the uses we're proposing. Uh, this proposes, and again, you may recall a couple of slides ago, what the, what the artist rendering looked like, and we have attempted, or the developer has attempted, to match up with the intent of that. And so I think you will find that it looks pretty similar, at least to what we saw as guidance from the city about things that our community can, can support. Again, just another view, uh, a softer view. That's a watercolor. Uh, Mr. Knox knows I like to roll those out in public hearings because they usually go a little better. But uh, it's, it's the same, same type of picture, just a different perspective. Here's the, again, back up to the front. So now I'm going back the other way. And I think this is interesting. So the, the proposed operator would be racetrack. Uh, we're all familiar with, with racetrack's operations, I, I hope and think. Uh, great operator, locally owned. Georgia company, big employer, lots of opportunities. And what you'll see about this store is that it looks a little different than what we've got uh, in proximity to Peachtree Corners. A couple of years ago, uh, you may be familiar with the, so the store on Jimmy Carter uh, at kind of the gateway to Norcross there, right at the flyover where Jimmy Carter crosses under. That was at that time the next generation. Well, well here we are probably three years later, and we've got a store that we think is very compatible architecturally with kind of the next generation of, of what folks are looking for with respect to building lines and building materials and, and quite frankly, the amenity. Uh, you know, I know my wife and kids like to, like to go in the, in the convenience store about as good as they like going anywhere else because of all the, the things they can get. It's, it's, you know, have fun at the junk store till your heart's content in there at the smoothie bar and coffee bar and whatever else. So we think that, that this uh, is a great amenity if you think about it, and you're coming north on 141, I think it's in Shambly before you could stay on 141 and stop for gas until you get up to 120 in Johns Creek. That is a really long run. You can pull off. Uh, there are other stores at various places, uh, but there's nothing going this, back, this way up this corridor on the northbound commute that offers an amenity like this. And if you think about some of our congestion points in the city, one of them's at Peachtree Corner Circle and 141. And you know, there's a heavy, heavy volume user there. It's great, I frequent it, but I think this would serve to relieve a good bit of that congestion through the intersection because folks can get in and out at a signalized intersection at a great operator and continue their track northbound and we capture some of that traffic in, in the city, uh, which again, I think is, is a great amenity for the city. Just other perspectives, so you can see the building material. Uh, again, high-end building material, brick, stone, uh, glass, uh, exposed metal. Um, I, can I, I, I'll take a question if you want, or? Well, it would be Engineering Drive extended in 141. Right now, Engineering Drive, uh, I, think, I think Gwinnett Clinic's on the northern corner, and then it's the nine acres on the southern corner, but Engineering Drive tees into 141 right there, and so if we're allowed to do this plan, Engineering Drive would be extended and become a full intersection there. And so this would be on the east side of that intersection on the northbound travel. They would be in front. So they would front on 141, Peach Street Parkway. Which again, uh, well, let me find a better perspective. Uh, this, is, this is the, let me, let me just jump through this and then I'll get a better and I'll, I'll orient you. Uh, this is the wine store. Again, some of us are familiar with this. Uh, we've looked at several locations. We think this is the best location uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, one, because it's not on a high impact intersection. Uh, we hope this will be a great amenity for the city. Our voters uh, approve this, want this. 
Uh, and so we're trying to, trying to make it happen. Uh, there aren't that many standalone uh, retail sites of a, a proper size to, to do this, and we think the building materials and the aesthetics of it uh, will work really well uh, here on this location. So again, about a 10,000 square foot building, uh, brick, stone, uh, glass, exposed metal, seams, uh, et cetera. So to the question point and to the two here. So this is Engineering Drive, as I was mentioning. Uh, the, the, the racetrack site would be on the southern side of that. The uh, wine store site would be on the northern side of that. This is about an eight and a half acre site and the development uh, would be about uh, four, four, right at four acres of that. One thing that I, that I want to mention because I know it's been discussed previously and I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to mislead. I think we ought to have all the facts out there. This project to get these pads would require piping about 500 feet of this creek. I know that was pr talked about, uh, this, parts of this project were talked about earlier uh, in 2015, uh, but we've moved away from, originally the request, some of you may have seen it, contemplated development over here and on this side, uh, including piping on both sides of the creek. And we went back and looked at it, looked at some of the things the city was doing to incentivize folks to try to develop in a different way, cut down uh, the development on this site. And so what you would see if this is approved is us being able to pipe about 500 feet of, this, of the creek. And it runs right like that and then goes under a major culvert under 141, which is probably another five or 600 feet, and then comes out. It flows out of the shark <laughs> and flows downhill towards the street and then comes out here and joins up with the creek that comes out of some ponds on this side uh, and then ultimately up by the forum flows down through. So uh, it's a, this is the convergence point and we thought this was more important and also made more sense because if you're going to set aside property as potentially a trailhead or as potentially open space, one, it's a sufficient size, it's nine acres, and two, although this map doesn't really show it but, but many of us know, this is centrally located kind of in Technology Park broadly and so we thought it was a good, a good, a good rationale for, for doing what we're doing. So, well, that said, uh, I need a drink of water, maybe, but be glad to answer questions. And Yes, sir. To, to be determined, there are, there are a few different ways under the city ordinances that that could happen. The, the property owner may put it in a conservation easement, which would retain ownership, may dedicate it to the city. So that's to be determined as we work through the process. But the zoning request, if we're ultimately approved, would in, in, uh, impose a open, the open space designation on it. So it would be zone TO. Uh, it, it would not be, no, sir. But the actual logistics of that are still, you know, we still got to work, work through who ultimately owns it. Uh, but the, the property owner that has the declarence rights on the lake and that can activate the lake is also the property owner that owns these tracks. And so a part of the whole transaction would be to open those amenities more broadly. It's TPA. So there are mul multiple entities in involved. Yes, ma'am. Is this one work? Ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry. On. Okay, so uh, with with respect, th that's a that's a difficult question to answer for, for two reasons. We're not sure exactly what the city wants to do with respect to trails on property that it may control, sidewalks and other things of that nature. With respect to the property in question, my folks would certainly construct the improvements that we're reflecting on this plan. But a lot of what I showed is is off site, and so that would not be things that that my folks would do. We see opportunities, and we think that. These are catalyst sites, and so the, you know, the the, the multi-use trail here, for example, would be a part of the development that that my folks would would incur. But accessing the the easement here, you know, that's that's a city 
a city issue. So I don't mean to misrepresent that my folks are, are putting it all in, but to the extent that they control it and it's associated with our property and to the extent that our property can help facilitate and connect. Because candidly, it's very difficult to do anything in the broader city plan if you don't have these key pieces involved in the project. And so to, to answer your question specifically about cost, I don't know what the city budget may be relative to things the city might otherwise do. But with respect to what we're doing here, the, the property owner and developer would be responsible for the infrastructure. I have to go to the councilwoman. Uh, just some of you participated last week on an analysis of what the pl pl plans might potentially be for the trail system and provided input on what you'd like to see there and what was going on there. The consultants have taken that input back and we'll have some more information on that as time progresses forward. But it's important to know that everybody is engaged in that project and the results we get from there will be shared with the entire community. And, and we will certainly integrate, integrate that into our project to the extent it, it makes sense. I mean, that's part of, part of what we're hoping is that everybody will see the value and utility in trying to make connections and, and, and put property into production, uh, whether it's passive production but activating it versus redevelopment of obsolete buildings versus uh, new amenities uh, in high-traffic high corridors. So. Lee, I've got a quick question. Sure. On the... Um, area that's marked for the residential yes. housing. What was the thought process as far as that figure? I think you'd said 295 units right. of which I believe you said 70% was one bedroom, 30% was two bedroom. Was that apartment, condo? It, what's... it, it, it is for rent housing. Okay. Um, but the idea because of the configuration and because of the limitation on bedrooms is that it's not family housing. Okay. So what we're trying to target is kind of the millennial set, people that would be interested in living in a 600 square foot studio or with one bedroom, or people that would be interested in living in a 750 square foot studio with two bedrooms. So it's all one and twos, and again, 70% of them are ones, one bedrooms, uh, and about 30%, and th those are round numbers. It's I think it's 203 uh, one bedrooms and whatever the balance is, 92 uh, two bedroom units out of the 295 total. And was that based on the city study that went into uh, place, the LCI study? Was that part of that or? Well, not, not that, that certainly the, the, the target demographic that we're trying to hit, absolutely. Uh, with respect to the unit mix, absolutely. With respect to the location, definitely what we were trying to accommodate is kind of where the city had identified as a place to put it. With respect to the exact breakdown, to be totally candid, I think that was more economic driven on what would make the most sense and be most appealing to the to the market. So. Yes, sir. Uh, the, so, so the first question is in this area back here, is that going to stay green space? The answer to that is is yes, with a caveat. It, it would be developed but it would be open. So it would, it, because of the way the slopes are out here, it would be, uh, it would have construction, so it wouldn't be undisturbed as it is today, but it would be replanted and repopulated and would be what natural. <laughs> yes, sir, this site is, is, is very, what, what the, the term is, is rough. I mean, it's, there's a lot of, uh, lot of topography here. And so the idea would be to balance the site. So this side would raise a little bit, as I understand it. And this site would be cut a little bit, as I understand it, so that it, you have kind of a flat pad here, and then it would all kind of slope up along that road, the proposed new engineering drive extension. So it would slope up towards uh, this point, which is higher than 141. But it would not include any disturbance over here, so cutting this side to fill this side. It would all be contained here on site. I have a question. The uh, millennial housing, uh, where does that 
front. Is that Peachtree Industrial or is it Medline? This is Peachtree Industrial and this is Reps Miller. Okay. So uh, our friends at Racetrack have a store right here. Okay. Uh, and this is a signalized intersection. This is in the city of Norcross. Uh, this is Peachtree Corners here. So Reps, Mil Reps Miller, PIB. Just north of the split. Holcomb Bridge is right down here and it splits, you know, just back a little bit.